gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you to the, the Sponsors Lounge this evening and uh, I'm also very delighted to welcome to Tim, uh, uh, our Director of Football, uh, to, to, for his very first stint in the VIP, VIP Lounge tonight. So we're del delighted to welcome you Tim, thank you very much. What we do, we tend to ask you a few questions to, to drill you. Uh, it's not too bad, so it's quite a, an easy going experience, so we hope it's not too, too daunting for you. But the easy task for you is to go through the lineup for us tonight. That's the first question. Okay, um, we'll talk about Saturday in a minute then, shall we? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, in goal, obviously, Jazz Singh. Um, right back is Christian Green, and uh, making his, uh, his debut this season is uh, Rhys Sharp, so we're delighted to have him back um, in left back. And then we've got uh, Owen Wallace and, and Joe Kettle in the centre of defence. Um, we've got James Morris and Carl Finn on, on the wings with um, Charlie Shaw and um, Paul Green in the centre midfield. And then Adam Vernon, um, who's got a, had a slight knock Saturday, he was on the bench, but uh, he came on for the last sort of uh, 20 minutes. Um, and he will be um, behind Tyler Waite up front. Obviously, we've got several injuries, and those have been well documented, but uh, hopefully nothing too serious, and it won't be long before we get these lads back on the pitch to give us a little bit more competition for places, because I think it's fair to say we're a little bit thin on the ground at the moment. Um, but uh, there's no real long-term injuries, which is really pleasing. Um, so, um, unfortunately, with the games coming thick and fast, it is difficult at times, but uh, we've just got to monitor those and make sure that they get... Uh, they get up to speed quickly as possible and they don't come back and break down. That's great, thank you for that and uh, for explaining the reasons for the selection. But it's great to have Reese back because uh, he's, a, he's a great player but also that sort of long throw as well is another harbour to our, to, our, to our game as we go on. So we did say we'd talk about Saturday, not, not in depth but uh, it was, let's be fair, a bad day at the office, lots of frustration. And uh, obviously I've heard Mike's interview and heard your interview straight after the game, but now we're a few days on. What you saw are reflections and what will we see different tonight? Well, I think first and foremost you'll see a nice pitch out there, but I think it's very easy to turn around and stand here and make excuses. It was an awful performance Saturday. Um, I've got to give them a bit of credit that they, they weren't a particularly good side, although they probably did deserve their result. Um, it was a fortunate goal to say the least I and mean, those of you that have seen it back it was definitely should have been uh, disallowed but uh, those are the things you've got to deal with when you're looking at uh, the officials and the pitch and everything else but you know nonetheless we, we, we've played in pre-season with quite some good width and some very good passing we moved the ball very quickly and unfortunately we didn't do that on Saturday and uh, <coughs> As I said, as far as St Ives are concerned, they, they, they really stuck to their task and they started time-wasting quite early on and then they, they were slowing it down. They didn't allow us to get any tempo on the ball and play to the sort of levels that we've been playing at. So uh, all in all, a very frustrating afternoon for everybody and um, the goal just about capped it up. But, you know, we, we move on, there's, you know, there's plenty of games, but it was one that we certainly, you know, we, we didn't deserve anything from, if I'm totally honest with you. And, and you made reference to the pitch, and it's nice to be back on our home pitch tonight, but we've got to go to lots of grounds this season that have a, a St Ives type pitch, and uh, it won't be as easy to play as it, as it is at home. What are your sort of plans as you go through training and to, to, to sort of adapt to those situations? Are you looking to try and train on horrible pitches, for example? Uh, I think it's, um, you know, we'd like to think most of the pitches are pretty, pretty decent. Um, but you, you're correct, it, it is, it's a totally different ball game to playing out here to, this evening when you're playing on, on, on pitches that have not got a true surface. And we've got to learn to deal with that. And uh, I think that uh, when you look at the performance and those of you that witnessed the, the performance on Saturday will say we just didn't stand up to it. And we just didn't deal with what we had to deal with. Uh, and closing down and pressure, the, the, having someone that could put a foot on the ball and start passing it even if the pitch wasn't good. But to deal with it, we've just got to, we've just got to grow up and we've got, to, we've got to learn how to deal with things like that. And, and that's going to be all part of you know, us getting to where we want to be. And you know, it's something that we can't make excuses about. We've just got to get on with it. And you also alluded to some of the injured players earlier in the interview. And you know, it wasn't ideal to have six or seven 
names who you probably as automatic choices are on, on your team. So you must be itching to get some of those players back. Who 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 is really close to, to getting back onto that team sheet? Well, I think it's uh, pleasing to see that uh, Chris Late, who's not kicked a ball all pre-season, um, he rolled his ankle in I think the first or the second training session, and he's been out all pre-season, but he's on the bench tonight. And uh, I think those people that know Chris Late know that he is a threat. Um, he's got some pace, he's, he's, he's capable of scoring a goal. So, so we're delighted to have him on the bench, which will give us another string to our bow, so to speak. Um, but the, the others are, you know, Ryan Bezik is probably the furthest away. Uh, Quasi come off after 20 minutes on Saturday, which was another blow. And, um, you know, he's probably going to be about seven to ten days away. So there, there's nothing too serious to worry about. It's just that we need to be absolutely 100% of when we're putting these lads back in, that they're not going to break down again. And that's the gamble you've got to take. So what's happened is that we've had an opportunity to bring in some lone players, some young players, talented players, Kyle Finn and James Morris. What? what? Can fans expect to see from these guys who are coming in? They're not going to be here long term, but they obviously you've seen something in that you like that, that you want to inject into the team. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I think that when we've lost Tristan Dunkley, we've lost Christian Lay, and uh, you know, you look round and all of a sudden Dexter Walter goes to, to Coventry, and we're a little bit light on, on width and pace. And uh, Carl Finn, for those of you who saw the Coventry game, Carl Finn played against us. And I thought he'd done really well. And uh, speaking to Coventry, we were delighted that they would allow us to have him for a month and uh, see, see where that takes us. Um, with regards to James, I've got a very good relationship with Grant McCann in Doncaster. And um, we also brought in Shane Blaney, a left sided centre half. Unfortunately, he got injured. So it hasn't been the best of starts in terms of that's concerned. But as I said, it's a long season. But I think those two lads can bring us some width and some pace and some, hopefully some excitement here this evening. Fantastic. We're, I don't, obviously, they're starting tonight. It's great to see that. So, you know, what are your thoughts on tonight's opposition? We're facing a team tonight who are riding the crest of a wave, two back-to-back -back promotions. They, they, they expect to be at the top of the league in their recent history. Well, I think it's like anything else, isn't it? You've, you've got to look after yourself. And that's something we didn't do on Saturday. You know, it's all about what we do, how we prepare, how we take the game to them. You know, whilst they have got some strengths, and there's no doubt about that, you know, it's, I'm more important to see a reaction from ourselves in terms of our performance compared to what we did on Saturday. So really looking forward to tonight. I think it gives us a good opportunity to hopefully get some goals and bounce back and uh, not worry too much about our church. Fantastic. Great positive attitude. And finally, we've not had a chance to sort of speak to the management about uh, Dexter departing, but we heard your thoughts and read about them in the press about what you thought about Dexter early on and we're sort of looking forward to the what he was going to offer us this season, but uh, you must be gutted that he's gone. We're also delighted for him as an individual that he's got this opportunity. Well, I think having been in the game a long time and seen a lot of, club, a lot of players progress, you know, we're at a level where we can give the lads the platform to perform upon. And I mean, um, as I said, when I come in the first couple of weeks and I saw Dexter, I thought, well, what's this lad doing at this level? Um, I didn't know anything about him, but he certainly excited me with his with his talent and more importantly his attitude. He's a very level-headed lad and I think the lad's going to have a really good future in the game. Um, fortunately we've got something for him as some compensation and we've also got some salon clauses so you know the club will be looked after if the lad does progress um, like I think he will do because I think it won't be long before he, he will be really a name to be recognised around this area. Fantastic, well thank you so much Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Harris.